Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we're going to be continuing our short course on creating a PCB in reverse. And today we're going to be looking at the schematic section of this. If you don't remember, in past versions of this, uh, this video, we've been going through the files output from the, the, again, we're going in reverse here. So it's the files output from the entire design, which would be Gerber files. We, re we reviewed those. Then we went back and we did the actual layout. In the last video, we actually placed the components in there. We imported the components. We actually had to swap those out because it was an older library going from KiCad 4.0 to 5.0. And now we're going to be doing is actually creating the schematic. And there's a couple versions of how you can do this. And depending on how you uh, you want to you want to <laughs> create uh, how difficult it is for you here. So let's take a look at what we have going on here. So we have. Uh, our project, uh, I've already opened this one, but if you don't remember, it's op I open project. I'm in this, uh, this higher level. This is the set of directories that you downloaded already. And so you see we're going to be in, in uh, directory four here, creating the schematic. This is just a project we have here, hardware, and then you open up this one here. And I already have it open. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the schematic editor because we don't have anything else in here. Now, we do have actually the, the graphics already in there, but we will get rid of those in a second. Uh, or we'll get rid of those in uh, the next video, rather. What we're going to do is take a look at the schematic editor here. So I'm going to pull up. This is the remap symbols. Now, if you don't remember, this is because we are going from a KiCad 4.0 project to KiCad 5.1, which is the most recent version of KiCad. Uh, if you're watching this later on, it's possible there is a later version. KiCad 5.1.1 or KiCad 6.0, whatever it is. So uh, we're going to take a look at this here. In, there's a reason, though, between KiCad 4.0 and 5.0, there was a swap in the, the style of how foot, uh, schematic symbols were, uh, were denoted in the actual schematic. So they're basically the storage system for all of the different symbols has changed between the 4 and 5. So we need to remap them. That's what we're looking at here. So uh, this is the remap dialog. There is an entire video about this over on Contextual Electronics YouTube channel, so you can check that out. What we're going to do is hit remap symbols. Hope for the best. You'll see this dialog pop up. There's really only two schematic symbols in here. So um, what we're going to do is uh, it says there's only two. Uh, uh, basically, there's only two two symbols in here. So we're just going to hit OK and remap. We see that they've re remapped here. This one was actually a uh, rescue component, but we can swap that if we want to. And finally, we can hit. Uh, we can hit save. Nope, sorry, we don't want to hit save. That's the text. We hit close here. So we did remap those. And now the, uh, the uh, schematic has opened up. Now, what we have here is we have the two components that we just remapped. This is the connector, and this is the 555 timer. If you want to do the hard version of this, so if you're interested in you know, a little bit more of a challenge, I would say go and delete this symbol and start from scratch. You can go and create uh, the, the library component from scratch and uh, do that. There are videos about that over on the Contextual Electronics YouTube channel as well. That is something you will have to do, but probably outside the scope of this short course right now. So we're just going to use the existing uh, symbol that's here. If you want to, just go and delete that and start from scratch there. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and replicate this schematic here. There is a, you know, just a screenshot. This is that I imported. Again, if you want to see how to import uh, images here, uh, there's a button here. But basically, there's a whole video on how to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to basically replicate this behavior here and create a schematic. So again, if you're doing this, uh, if you hopefully you are following along, I would say go now and go do it. Right, pause this video and go and do this uh, do this schematic uh, symbol association and uh, and do the do the actual uh, schematic. Finish the schematic out using that that image that's at the bottom. You have to import uh, resistors and capacitors. Struggle through it a little bit, maybe, but uh, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay, so uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create. Uh, so this, the, there is a little bit of a difference here. We don't actually use a 9 volt. We're actually going to be using a, uh, a 3 volt 2032 uh, CR2032 battery. So we'll just import a battery symbol here. <coughs> um, I'm sorry, that's that's a different way to do it. Uh, we actually have the uh, on on this uh, symbol here. We could either use the 2032 or we could use the the SAO header here, which is what uh, the rest of the design is based on. Uh, and so uh, we'll double check the pin out on that. I believe pin one is power, pin two is ground. Uh, so let's go and import some components here. I'm going to hit A to import a new component. It's going to load up the symbol libraries if they're not already loaded. And then usually I just start filtering. So if I need a resistor, I just type in R, and the first thing that pops up is a resistor. Click to drop it. <coughs> I'm also going to do the same thing, hit A to, to start um, the dialog here. And then C, I want a capacitor. And so I'm going to hit Enter and just drop a C in here. Let's see what else we need. We also need an LED. That's again, that's an A, and then LED, 
and select that. And these are just generic components right now, right? You see that we actually do not have anything else associated with this right now. And that's actually kind of beneficial for what we're doing here. All right, so this, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we won't have as much of a, uh, of a, a view of this thing. But uh, let's, uh, let's move this guy over here. I'm just mousing over, hitting M to move. I'm going to delete these two traces here. Uh, and then we'll start placing some of these components. So let's uh, start from, from uh, matching pin 3. So we want to move this resistor over. We want to move this LED over. And then we're going to hit W. Oops. Uh, we're going to hit W to start drawing a wire. Yep. So draw from the circles. If you see the circles disappear, that means they have connected. Same thing here. W, start drawing. Click to start. Click to finish. And then finally, we want to actually end on what it lists as zero volts, but we're going to list as ground. And so I'm going to hit, again hit A, and then type in ground. And this is a power symbol here. Uh, I don't like that one. Sorry. A, <laughs> ground. And then I usually use the this one here. So there we go. I hit W to draw a wire, click to finish, and now we have a ground symbol here as well. So what we'll also do is we can uh, mouse over, hit C to copy, and place one here, W to start a wire, click to finish. Okay, so now we finished this part of the circuit right here. We've also connected pin one. Let's go and finish out here and connect uh, the bottom of C1, which is uh, connected to pins two and six. So we'll drag this, this component down, hit mouse over, hit M to start, to move rather. We're going to copy again, mouse over, hit C, click to drop it, W to draw a wire. And then we're going to connect it to <coughs> pins two and six. Here we go, pin two, pin six. Those are now connected. All right, so now between pins two and six and pin seven, we need a resistor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the resistor here, mouse over, hit C, put a resistor here. And then between pin seven and power, we want another resistor. So we'll copy it again. And now we have all that. Okay, so we want to hit W to start. Oops, start that in the right place. W to start, click to finish. The drawing tool kept going there, so I could just click to start. And you see how the drawing tool is still going, that little pen looking thing. So just uh, click to start, click to finish. And then finally, uh, on pins four and eight, we want to connect that to power. So let's do that here. We're going to draw this up to the top here. And there we go. And OK. Now the last thing I'm going to do here is, I believe there's one other component here, which we did not actually uh, show in this diagram, but I am going to put in here regardless. I'm going to drop a uh, capacitor in here. And this is done for decoupling. So if you have a power source that has a little bit of blips on it, uh, a little bit of noise, uh, a little bit of, you know, basically it just gives you a little bit of extra charge to power this thing when it needs, when it, needs it. And so we're going to put another capacitor here. And then finish here. And I just connected the, that capacitor between power and ground. Uh, okay, so um, I'm going to go and open up a the existing schematic just to double check against that. But I believe I just want to make sure that pins one and three are actually the proper pins here. So I'm going to say, uh, uh, sorry, I want to open up a new instance of EE schema. I'm going to hit uh, Windows key in my case, or however you open up your um, the EE schema. So this is going to be a separate instance of EE schema here. I'm going to say open. Go to PCBs. Yep. And in one of the finished PCB files here, we'll look at the schematic. That's fine. We'll have to remap everything. That's fine. Hit OK. Everything gets remapped. Good, good, good. And it looks like we do actually have this um, C2 is over here. This is just drawn in a different place. But pins one, pin 1 is power. Pin 3 is ground. And it looks like everything else we've done so far has been good. So I'll just minimize that just to make sure it's there. So I'm going to draw it like this. Start it here. Finish it here. Oops, missed a little bit here. Delete that horizontal wire. All right, and then connect this to ground. 
All right. So um, some of those values we showed there. So we're going to do, uh, we'll match those. So now if we want to add values, we can either do that one of two ways, right? We can mouse over and hit E. That opens up the entire dialog here. So we could change out the value field here. We can also mouse over, hit V, and that just allows us to edit that specific field. So if we want to do the value, we do 10U, and then that's marked as a 10 microfarad capacitor. Now that doesn't really do much other than mark it as a 10 microfarad capacitor. When, when and if we want to you know, put an actual 10 microfarad capacitor down on the board, we need to actually put the, what, the manufacturer part number in there. And so that's a different process. There is a, a space for that. If you mouse over and hit E, there is an MPN field here. And so you can go and search on a digikey, a mouse, or an arrow, whatever, and find the, a manufacturer part number 4 and 0603 10 microfarad capacitor. However, we are not putting that in yet. <clears throat> OK, let's do the same thing down here, 10 microfarad. And then just for ease of use here, I do not remember what the values are supposed to be. So let's uh, find that older schematic. Where'd it go? Uh, here. There we go. So we're going to say 100, 168K. OK, so again, here, this has changed a little bit how you see on draw in there. So they now, now, now put the uh, value to the side. Value 100, and value 68K. OK, so now we have a schematic that matches the other schematic. Let's just double check here. So it looks pretty similar. Uh, ground, good, good. I mean, the thing we didn't, so you notice here, I just added a bunch of ground connections. Each one has its own connection here. We also could have just tied them all together like I did and then labeled them. And labeling is actually another good thing. So if we want to label things, we can do that. Hit L to label, VCC, and then we can drop this label here. All that does is it names the net. So when we put it into the board, it's going to say, you know, if we are connecting from the top of this capacitor to the pin 8 of the 7555, it'll actually say that's the VCC net. And that's important you know, just to kind of double check your work there. Um, it doesn't mean it's the, you know, you, you don't have to do that, but I think it actually clears a lot of things up here. OK, so let's minimize this guy. And oh, where'd it go? Where did it go? Here we go. Uh, all right, so the last, the last step we're going to do here is uh, we can do an ERC check. Let's run that. First, we need to annotate. That's up here. So we're going to annotate, basically uh, use the entire schematic, keep existing annotations. There are none yet, so that's fine. And then this is just how we order it. We're going to say annotate. So now what we see is that all of these, these different values, all these different uh, components have reference designator, C1, R1, R2, R3. And uh, that allows us to then go and do things like error checking, run. So now this, these are uh, driven errors. And these are basically because of how uh, we hook different things up here. So you see. Some of these things are actually not connected, so we can we could fix that very simply. And then finally, there's also a, a, a not driven because of the way that pin 3 is actually configured here. It's not configured as a driving pin, and so that's what the error is on that one. So let's solve the first two problems very simply. So we can just do this. There we go. And as we can run ERC again. Those two errors should disappear, saying, hey, these two pins are not going to be connected here. So those two errors disappear. The last one is this one. It says, oh, there's two errors here. It's basically saying, hey, this, this input pin is not being driven. So it's basically saying the ground net does not have any driving pins to it because there aren't any set as that. This is an error that a lot of beginners get, get confused with. Unfortunately, the, the driven errors, I usually just ignore them. Uh, I think that you, know, you have to either have to be all in on um, configuring how a pin is uh, set up as a driving pin. I'm not a big fan of that, uh, so usually the driving errors I ignore. So, and we're down to one error there. It's uh, pretty good. OK, so from this point, what you could do is you could go and start doing the association like we did in the, the, the last video. You could see all of the components that exist here. right? You see that we, ha we don't actually have any footprints associated here. So what we could do is we could go and start changing out the footprints if we wanted to. right? So this one says, so basically clicking that button here now allows us to pull up the footprint library browser. If you remember from the last video, we did things like this, where we did, that was, the, was that the wrong one? That was the wrong one. Um, <laughs> so we do capacitor SMD. That loads this up. And then we can go and select something like capacitor SMD 0805 hand solder. right? And now that has been inserted there. We can go and do that with all of these other, uh, other footprints if you want to, and then go through. That then allows us to then, when we import the whole thing as a new, a new uh, 
Sorry, I've got to save this. Um, when we import this whole thing into the actual layout, then the footprints, the physical footprints, are associated with these symbolic symbols here, and uh, and that allows us to actually then go and connect all those things together. So this is a quick look at the schematic. We've now created the schematic. Again, like I said, the next step, if you if you were going through, you would we just created the schematic. You go and associate all the footprints. You pull in the footprints in the layout. You do the layout, and then you generate the files. And we've done all those things in past videos. So if you if you're confused about what I'm saying right now, go back in the series here, and you'll see how we did that. We're doing this backwards because we wanted to show you that you know an isolated version of each of these things. So looking at the Gerber files, normally it takes you to go through an entire design to get to the Gerber file generation. But some of these things are very, very important. You don't get enough repetition on them. Same thing with layout. A lot of times it's so confusing getting through the schematic symbols that getting to the layout is actually really, really tough. I wanted to show that up front, showing this is the physical thing that you're actually connecting and the thing that will actually go and make you'll make the circuit board out of. We had to then go backwards to get to the point we're at now, which is creating the schematic. In the last video here, uh, there's going to be one more video about actually pulling in the uh, graphical footprints that we created, uh, that I created in Inkscape. And we're going to pull those in and actually make footprints out of them and then put those into the layout. That's actually something that's already in the layout here. So if you uh, want to see that, there's one more video here about that. Otherwise, your board is ready to go. I mean, from the beginning, your board was ready to go and ship out because you had uh, a finished board. But you've been working your way backwards. And now we're to the point where you would create your, your graphics. So if you have any other questions about this, you always go to the Contextual Electronics Forum. That's forum.contextualelectronics.com. We teach all this stuff and a lot more over at contextualelectronics.com. We're a course where we teach you how to build circuit boards uh, and actually the electronics that are underlying all of it. right? So not just how do you put a resistor onto a board, but also what is a resistor? How do you pick a resistor? You know, What are some of the, the characteristics that matter? And how do they interact with the rest of your, your, your circuit? Electronics is a really big field, and uh, we try and cover a lot of it because, you know, as you're getting started as a beginner, there's there's kind of a lot to get your arms around. We focus on some some things like this, like layout and making things blink, because it's the simple introduction. And once you kind of get that under your belt, then you'll be more likely to go back and say, okay, let's kind of dig into the, you know, transistor theory. Let's dig into what an op amp is and how a microcontroller works and all the other fun things that are kind of down underneath the hood of all these things. So that's all for now. If you want any other information about KiCad, you can always go to forum.kiCad.info, and we'll see you in the next video.